All right, and then let's not forget the connection that we have here with the numbers, chapter 9. And then, of course, we have the description of Apollyon and the king that's over these locusts on verse 11. That's 9-11. And then, of course, he's known for terror, and I can show it to you in many, many verses already. I'm sure that you've seen him, that he's associated to terror. And that that's what we see the end result of Babylon, commercial Babylon being brought down as the connection to terror. It's no accident that that number's like that. All right. It is for those who have eyes to see. Now, it's actually for those who have eyes to see on both sides of the fence, my friends, for those who are like us. And then for those who work against us, it is a code that they are using. OK, to make those connections, to show the plan and how the plan is going to unfold. So I want you to see now, let me give real quick the support here that these are going to be connected to some sort of doctrine that's coming out of their mouth. And this is very important, the description of this doctrine, because it's going to tie us up exactly with what I told you was about Kundalini. Okay, and the Kundalini serpent, which represents this, believe it or not, illumination. Okay, so let's see right here that... And out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Now we're going to see the three exact same symbols portrayed again here in some later scriptures in Isaiah and even in the book of Job, which is going to be talking about Leviathan. Well, why is that relative? Well, because Leviathan is the rising serpent from the abyss. He's the serpent of chaos. And he also goes by many other names. So for anybody who has not seen any of my videos concerning him, is under the impression that he's some sort of mythological sea monster that is buried at the foot of Mount Sinai, well, then you're just being led astray. Because the reality of what Leviathan is, is that it's the presence, the spirit presence, the spirit description of the Antichrist who is none other than the devil represented as Apollyon in the, in the verses that we just looked at. So we're going to connect all that up to these locusts now. And we see that these locusts are speaking this fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed. By the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Now, why is it fire, smoke, and brimstone? So many people think, well, look, man, hey, that could be volcanoes. That could be tanks and, you know, a lot of people interpret this as like helicopters and things like that. Well, remember, it said that the locusts were only, well, they were not going to hurt the earth. They only had the power to hurt those men that didn't have the seal of the living God in their foreheads. And that now we see that the power is coming from their mouth and that they're represented as being poisonous. And that's by that scorpion tail. And then we represent that they are in this ravenous state, which we see them connected as the locust. So that is going to do away with the theory that we're dealing with machines here because they got the faces of men. So now they begin to attack men by what comes out of their mouth. Well, the connection for them having doctrine that comes out of their mouth because it's the exact opposite of how men are saved. And they're saved with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. They're saved by the word. So by them being connected to Apollyon, they have to be the opposite or the antithesis the anti of what Christ is. So their word is a killing word. His word is a quenching water, that water of truth, man, that fountain of life. And I'm not kidding. If you don't know that word, and if you don't see it as that, it's because you truly don't know it as that. It's because you have focused too much on the fire and the smoke and the brimstone. All right. Now that's the doctrine that they're going to bring. And I told you that's how they're going to bring down this Bible is by representing this vengeance, anger, and wrath. Well, here's the doctrine, and here's the mirror representation of what I'm trying to show you. And it's this brimstone. Well, everybody's preaching this hell and this fire and this damnation and this torture. If you don't just worship and say Yahweh and Yeshua in the exact same way, well, that's all the law. That's all the letter. You don't want to be involved in such a thing like that. Who did Christ come? He came for the lost sheep. Who did he chill with? He hung out with the sinners. So anybody that's out here cursing all these people and it's not trying to bring them into the kingdom with love, you're missing the point, my friends. Think deeply.